Good day, immortals. My name is Mika, and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I get dressed for the Ohio Renaissance Festival as Sprout the Fairy. So if you didn't know, I am a cast member for the Ohio Renaissance Festival, and my character is Sprout the Fairy. And Sprout is basically in charge of seeds and pollination. If you want to know more about Sprout the Fairy in depth, go ahead and check out this little video right here somewhere. But today I'm going to be focusing more on my garb and exactly how I get dressed, how much it costs, and what is all involved with my garb and how it relates to my character with all of the layering. So I will take you step by step exactly how I put on each individual piece of this crazy costume that I'm wearing. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so first things first, I have my hair in this funky ponytail bun thing. This is going to help me put my dreads in later. And then I am wearing this really comfortable tank top that I don't usually wear a bra with. And then I've got these shorts on that have a built-in basically panties, which really helps prevent chafing. And then I have these long, thick, fuzzy socks that help protect my feet underneath the boots. And first thing I put on are these really funky green pants that I got from Amazon. And I don't think they're available anymore, but I think these were about $25. I really love these big baggy Aladdin-like pants. And then the next thing I put on is this Maresca blouse. Now this was a little bit of an expensive blouse. I think it was like $63 after shipping. But the reason why I spent so much money on a blouse was because I really wanted a rusty burnt orange color and Maresca was the only place that I could find this color. But with it being a $63 blouse, it is a very good quality blouse. The next thing I'm going to put on is this really gorgeous leather bodice from Pterodactyl Leathers at Texas Renfest. I believe this bodice was $170. This is probably my favorite bodice when it comes to the design of the bodice. It's just so beautiful and foresty looking. I was wearing my Ravenswood leather bodice for this character, but at the Ohio Renaissance Festival, that bodice ended up being too modern for the setting. Now I was using this orange leather lacing this year at Renfest, or last year I should say, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this green cord because I'm thinking I really want green lacing instead of the orange lacing, so let's see how this looks. Now, in order to lace up my bodice, I am going to go crisscross over from the outside going in, like so. Tighten it a little bit. And from here, I'm actually going to pull this through the exact same hole. So uh, the laces are basically going to switch sides. Just like that, and I'm going to tighten it. And not only is that going to make a very tight uh, lace up, but it's also going to be a very pretty design. So you see how this is making it this sort of crisscross pattern all the way up. So that's what I'm going to do for the entire thing. And it does take a little bit of time to do. It takes a lot longer to do it this way than to do it a more traditional way of lacing up. But I think this way is just a lot more flattering. And also it does give it a more secure lace up or stitch up. Alright, and then I'm going to just tie it up. These laces are a little bit long. When I get my final laces, I'll cut them where I need to. But for now, I'm just going to kind of tuck them underneath like this. And this 
spot should be mostly covered anyway, so. All right, there we go. It's all looking nice and clean now. And oh yeah, I think I definitely like the green better than the orange. Moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my bracers now. I actually made these bracers and I did make a video on it. So if you wanna check out how I made these bracers, you can go ahead and click on the link wherever it is up top. I think it cost me about like $14 for the leather or something. All right, I have got my bracers on now. All right, next thing I am going to put on is the super awesome fairy skirt that I got on Etsy for about $100. This piece is probably one of the main defining pieces of my costume that really scream out fairy because it's just so earthy looking, so like foresty looking and I just, I'm obsessed with this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that around and it's really, really huge. So I got to kind of overlap it quite a lot. And I'm going to use these hair clips, these really big fat hair clips to actually secure the felt together. Um, it's supposed to be secured with the actual belt part of it, but I just find it easier to use the clips. So I'm gonna clip it once right there and I'm going to wrap this around and then I'm going to clip it again at the end of this part. Bam, just like that. All right, next part is uh, time for all the craziness. So this is my belt full of random crap. The belt is from Ravenswood Leather and I believe after it was on sale, uh, I got it for about $139 which is the normal price. I think I just didn't pay shipping. And this belt is seriously the most useful belt probably in existence. I'm not exaggerating. I 100% recommend a warrior's belt from Ravenswood Leather for anybody who can afford it. Anyone who wants to carry stuff on their belt. It's just amazing. Thankfully, I don't have to put on any individual pieces on the belt, except for my turtle shell. But everything else is just already connected to the belt. So all I have to do is just put on the belt. All right, there we go. All the craziness is on my belt. So, look at all that. Now one more thing, I gotta add my turtle shell pouch. Um, the reason why I have to add this separately, well, I could probably find a way to put it on uh, connected to the belt, but when I bought it, who I bought it from, Rain is Leather at Texas Rin Fest for 85 bucks, um, they didn't have a belt pouch option. They only had the big purse option. So I have to wrap this entire thing around my body like this. Gotta find a spot for it. And then I have to tighten it like so. And then I kind of tuck that strap underneath my belt. All right, there we go. Now this isn't really a great solution because when I'm dancing around a lot at Renfest, the pouch does tend to kind of get loose and start falling off my butt there. So I should probably find a way to actually wrap it around the belt itself. But since there's so much crap on my belt, I'm gonna go ahead and move on and tell you guys about my belt at the end of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my boots now. now. I will admit I forgot to clean them before I made this video, but these are knee-high boots by foot wear by foot skins, footwear by foot skins. And they make amazing leather moccasins. And these were about $230, which is a great price. Um, for example, Son of Sandlar's knee high boots are like $600. Their uh, shorter boots are like 230. And they feel absolutely amazing. I kind of want to make a separate video reviewing these boots just because I fell in love with them. They are so comfortable and they're just, they're perfect. Oh, and normally I do wear either band-aids 
or athletic tape like around my heel just in case it does chafe I don't think they really chafe anymore because I have worn these quite a few times um, but the chafing was really bad when I first ordered them because that's gonna happen to any leather boots when you first get leather boots the leather is quite stiff but then over time when you start wearing it the leather will start to soften so if you're going to wear boots like this to Renfest or whatever I would suggest putting some sort of bandage around the parts of your foot that's gonna chafe the most or to get you know the blisters just in case you know it's better safe than sorry you know what they say? They say, uh, boots before corset. Well, in my case, I really should do boots before belt. <laughs> Alright. Look at those dirty but sexy boots. I love these boots. Alright, next thing to wear is my wings. Obviously, I can't be a fairy without my wings, so... I'm going to go ahead and put them on inside of my bodice and blouse and shirt if I can. I want my wings to be as secure as possible. Um, they actually fell off one time at RunFest when I was in the middle of dancing. So I definitely want to do my best to get them in there real good. There are my wings. I got these wings from Do's Wienerlings on Etsy, and they also sell at the, I believe it's the Minnesota Rentfest. And these were 190 something. And then another staple piece to my costume is my folk owl cowl. Now I paid $78 for this. Their shop is on Etsy, but I am pretty sure they're over $100 now. Yeah, I just put this around my neck. Like so, just like that. I do my best to kind of, kind of cover up this orange patch right here. Make it look all nice and pretty. And then I'm gonna put on my dreads. I got these dreads from a store on Etsy and I paid originally, I think these were $94 but she ended up sending me the wrong dreads and refused to send me the right one. So Etsy actually fully refunded me. So technically I paid $0 for this. These are double ended dreads and I ended up just grabbing one dread and then tying a bunch of the other dreads around this one dread. So it ends up being like a ponytail. And then I just wrap this around my actual ponytail and I tie it in a little knot. See, I thread this through here. Thread the other one through. And then I tie it in a, a little knot. Not even a full knot, just kind of tie it like that. There we go, I have a little dread ponytail. There's no sense in trying to install every single individual dread into my head when I have the hat on and the hat doesn't fit over my entire head of dreads anyway. So the ponytail works best in this situation. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put on my one ear. I put on only one ear because I have my hat tilted to the right side of my hat is tilted upward. And so my left ear is just going to go inside of my hat. So there's no sense of in wearing a left ear. My right ear is going to be just barely exposed. I'm gonna put this on. I can't even really see how I'm putting this on right now. So I'm going to just sit here and hold it in place for like 30 seconds or however long. I need to, there we go, something like that. And these ears were, I think about $17 after shipping, about $10 before shipping from Madhouse FX Studio. And these are my favorite ears in the entire world. I think Madhouse FX Studio makes the best ears that I've seen at least. So if you want elf ears, definitely go check them out because they're a really great price. Like I said before shipping, these were only $10 and they go all the way down to the earlobe. So they look super good. 
and really realistic, so, and they are on Etsy. All right, last but not least is definitely my hat. Um, my hat may or may not be the number one signature piece of my character. This hat is just amazing. Um, this was, I got it from a store that's like three different stores in one store. I know one of the shops is called Alley at the Texas Renaissance Festival. They are the shop that sells all of the wooden sculptures. But this hat was made by a company called, let's see, Mad Hatter Mary Studio. I have seen them on Etsy, but I haven't really seen them selling their hats. So it was $95, which eh, I'd say it's like average price for a hat like this. You can find cheaper hats on Etsy, but this hat is just gorgeous. I absolutely adore this hat. It is a little bit of a struggle to put it on over these dreads, so I've got to kind of snug it on there. If that's even the right word to use. Got to wiggle it on, make sure it's tilted kind of to the side, but that this curly Q piece up here is going straight forward and that my ear is staying on. And there we go. I am now officially Mika or Sprout the Fairy. And dang, I look good. And I'm, I'm not talking about my face, I'm just talking about my garb. Now I forgot to mention earlier when I was actually like standing up in front of the camera, uh, I actually do have a mask for Sprout the Fairy. Um, obviously in 2020 I needed it and my mask is completely wrinkled up because it's been sitting in my suitcase that I use for Renfest. But this is a really awesome mask that I had someone there make for me. I did find the fabric at the thrift store and then one of the people there made this for me. And so it looks something like this when it's on. And what's really awesome about this mask is one, it has a, uh, a single elastic strap that can go all the way around my dreads. And two, the main um, good feature of this mask is that it is completely open in the bottom. So that was completely mandatory for my mask because I struggle to breathe in these cloth masks, especially when I'm overheating at RenFest with all these crazy felt on that's extremely hot. And two, I was dancing around, so obviously I need to be able to breathe. So this mask allowed me to do that. So I would wear the mask basically like this. And then I had this space down here to where my breath could go down and oxygen could go up so I could actually breathe and not be constantly breathing in my own carbon dioxide. So if you have to wear a mask at RenFest, hopefully we won't have to anymore, but let's just say in 2021 we do. Uh, I recommend wearing a mask like this for anything that requires you to do a lot of physical work like working at RenFest, especially uh, with the overheating. I recommend a mask that is completely open in the bottom so you can actually breathe without breathing in your own junk. Look, it's super cute and it matches my my garb and it looks kind of like wood. And obviously I would prefer not to wear it at all, but if I have to wear a mask, uh, this is a pretty good one, so. All right, back to whatever it was that I was talking about before. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the belt section, tell you all about the stuff on my belt. So here we go. Mushrooms, I got them on Etsy for about $28. This acorn was about $8 from Michael's. These are little acorn bells. Um, I actually want to rearrange these. I think this position's kind of ugly, but I got these at, I think at home during the uh, fall Halloween season. I got like a giant pack of them for like 15 bucks, I wanna say. And then I got this gourd this year at Texas Renfest. I think it was about $35. And it is a drinking gourd, so I can put water in it or whatever and drink out of it, which is totally amazing. Look at that pretty sun. What, is that a sun or is that a turtle? I thought it was a sun, but now looking at it, I think it might be a turtle. <laughs> and I did just replace this one. I got this on uh, eBay for like, I don't know, four bucks, six bucks or something. And uh, Hear that? It's full of seeds and stuff, so I can't even drink out of it. That's what this one was for, was to replace this crappy little thing. And then I got my amazing turtle pouch that I already talked about, which was from Raina's Leather uh, at Texas Renfest, $85, I think. Other side, I got this 
super fancy frog from Ravenswood Leather. I think this was about $15, $18. And then this is a mug that I got for free actually at a rehearsal at the Ohio Renaissance Festival. And I, I guess it was by Ye Dragon and Unicorn. It says ORF 2003. Oh, I totally forgot this pouch over here. This was from Leaf on the Wind Leather. It was a $30 pouch on Etsy. And then these two pouches are exactly the same. This was from Medieval Collectibles by, I think, Mythalon. And both of these were $20 each, so 40 total. This cute little mana pouch was from Etsy. I think a store called Outcast Props. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but this was $48, which is a little expensive, but it was the only mana potion bottle that I could find like this that had a plastic bottle instead of a glass one. So I can actually like bend it and not worry about it breaking. This was from Raina's Leather at Texas Ren Fest for $25. It did not come with this little necklace. I don't know where I got this necklace but I just kind of put it on there for character. And then on the back here, um, this is really just for really hot days. Uh, this is a fan from some store at Texas Renfest. Uh, a lot of stores sell this uh, exact fan at Texas Renfest. And this was $15. And the last thing over here, uh, I actually made these seeds because my character is the seed and pollination fairy. So I just bought some like 30 cent piece felt and um, a little seed plushy things out of them. And the reason why I have these and like this little acorn here and um, well, everything on my belt is, is because kids, kids at Renfest absolutely love touching everything out on my belt. I discovered this when I was working at Ravenswood Leather. I had some things on my belt. And every single time a child would come in the store that was like under eight years old would come up to me and just touch everything on my belt. And I'm like, okay, kid. So kids love fiddling with all these little knickknacks on my belt. And as a fairy at the Ohio Renaissance Festival, my main job is to entertain children. So that's why I have a plethora of stuff on my belt is because it's, it's for the kids. So yeah, that is everything that I wear at Renfest. So everything that I'm wearing sums up to about $1,500, almost $1,600. And so if you want to look as elaborate as me, when it comes to like all the wearing, um, you, don't, you don't really have to buy $1,500 worth of stuff. Um, you know, you can go to Etsy. I mean, you can go to like the thrift store. You can make your own pieces. Um, you can wear cheaper pieces of garb that aren't uh, full grain deer leather and you know felt and all these crazy expensive pieces that are like a hundred dollars but in a lot of cases you probably are gonna spend that kind of money for a costume that's this elaborate like the noble men and women's costumes for Renfest, those can go up to like $5,000 for the entire uh, garb, so. But if you buy pieces that are made to last, it's worth it because you can wear these for years and years and years, as long as you take care of it and you don't go rolling around in the mud. But a lot of these pieces I've been wearing for several years now and they're still kicking and they're still in good shape. Maybe a little bit nasty from sweat, but they're not falling apart yet at least for the most part. But I hope you guys can see just how, especially for a character like mine, your character might not need so many layers, but for a character like mine, layering is the answer. It is the answer, the number one answer. Layers, layers, layers. When you've got an exceptional amount of layers, it tells me that your character has personality. Your character has gone through many experiences in life. Your character is a collector of things, um, has gone through many adventures. It really gives your character personality and it just gives them life. And like I said, maybe not every single character could have a bunch of layers, but if you're looking at your garb and you're like, dang, 
my garb is just so bland, so, uh, you know, it needs something else. Add layers, even if it's just simply, like, pieces of fabric, like scarves, you know, random knickknacks on your belt. <laughs> you can even put random knickknacks on your body. Oh, and I almost forgot one thing. Working at Ohio Run Fest as an official cast member, I get to wear this little badge. This one says 2020 ORF cast and this year or last year i've been wearing it like right here i should probably find somewhere on my belt to put it right here or something i could put like a little belt favor like thing or even just like a little piece of fabric wrap it around and then like stick this on the fabric so i'm not piercing my leather belt oh look at that made in the u.s of a that makes me very happy anyway guys i'm going to be linking as much as i can in the description so if you're looking for a certain individual pieces that I'm wearing, go ahead, check them out, buy them yourself. I just ask that nobody tries to directly copy me. <laughs> but I mean, some of the pieces that I'm wearing are literally one of a kind, so you physically couldn't anyway. And I hope that this video was somehow educational for some people when it comes to building your own garb, especially for like, LARPers and Renfesters. Like I said, I don't want you, I didn't make this video so that you could copy me. I just want to show you how you can make a really elaborate costume. And I know this garb is elaborate. I'm not even trying to be mods with that. I know I look good, okay? I know this garb is awesome. I'm not even gonna try to deny it. <laughs> yeah, I hope that this video gives inspiration to anyone out there to make your character's garb like super elaborate and with personality and life and layers and all that, you can always take your garb to the next step, or at least in most cases. I also wanna quickly show off this awesome little slingshot that I made for my LARP character. I don't wear this at Renfest, but for LARP, I love it. It's just so cute. I just love how uh, it matches everything right here. I'm not gonna be a very, uh, powerful mob character. I'm not gonna be slaughtering monsters left and right with the slingshot, uh, but it's cute. Great for uh, role-playing as a little fairy. But anyway, that's all for this video. I really appreciate all of the support that I get from you guys and all the nice comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope to see you in the next one.